Katherine and today I'm going to be focusing on self-care for students. I've had a request for a video on perfectionism and how to stop being overwhelmed and stressed out by needing to achieve standards of perfection and ideal work and always succeeding in the face of being a student and having assignments and schoolwork and teachers expectations to rise to all the time. I'll be offering three tips on how to overcome perfectionism and to get more out of your studies than the need for constant success. These tips will be useful to you if you consider yourself a perfectionist even if you aren't a student and also if you're just looking for guidance on how to practice self-care in the face of your studies. Perfectionism is something that I think permeates most educational environments because we're always trying to achieve something with our education, whether it's a goal, a project, some kind of life accomplishment. Often our schools have a competitive side to them which pushes our need for perfectionism, to always be showing off that we have done things perfectly, wholly and completely to the best of our abilities, but also to the best standards that other people have set. So tackling perfectionism and seeing how it affects our own life and work is a great opportunity for self-care and checking in to see what we really want to be getting out of the work that we do at school at whatever level we're at, and also how we can tend to ourselves in a kind and generous way. My first step is to break projects down into smaller pieces. This may seem obvious or more like a time management tip, but I think that this is an act of self-care in and of itself because we are making sure that we're acknowledging success at every stage in what we do. So if you have a semester long project or an extended paper or anything that feels almost like an insurmountable challenge because of how large the task is itself, if we're able to break that down into individual steps leading up to the project as a whole, then we can recognize all of the different successes that we've had at each stage of our learning process and also start to recognize growth. Something that perfectionism can impede is the ability to honor how we learn and how we grow step by step in order to accomplish something as a whole. If we're able to honor the process of the projects that we work on a little bit more, then we can start to recognize all the things that we achieve on a daily basis and also how much we improve and how we change from day to day and start to have more self-compassion and inevitably more self-confidence towards how we approach and achieve our goals. So as you approach the next project or assignment that you have to complete, try to see where the individual milestones might fall on a daily basis. By doing this, you'll be able to step back a little bit from viewing success only in terms of accomplishing one entire final thing rather than all of the work, effort, and achievements it takes to get there in the end. My next piece of advice is to start assessing your own personal goals rather than viewing your success in any given class in terms of what other people say you should be getting out of that class. You might be familiar with projected outcomes of a class or what the teacher hopes for you to get out of it by the end. Projected outcomes are there as much for the teacher as they are for the individual students in order to stay on track of their lesson planning, but that doesn't mean that you need to measure your own success and progress based off of those outcomes all the time. As you look at the classes that you take this semester, start to think about what you want to get out of them and what do you need to get out of them and what were your motivations for taking them in the first place. In some cases, you might be taking a required class in which you just need a passing grade, in which case you don't need to become an expert in that subject or devote all of your energy to that subject, but rather could benefit from focusing on the basics and achieving that baseline that you need. This will free up time and energy that you can devote to other things that you have more of a personal investment in or that will further your educational career in more ways. Look at your plan for achieving your level of success in each class and think about how you can approach your work in order to achieve your personal goals rather than the projected goals that are set by somebody else. The ways that we tend to measure whether a class is useful for us comes from information like why other people have taken the class, what people say are the most useful things from that class, whether they apply to us or not. It's likely that you'll approach a class that's crucial for your career choices much differently than you might an elective that you're taking for fun. So it makes sense that you should also change the way in which you approach the work for those classes depending on your different goals. 
My final tip for you today in fighting perfectionism is to practice honesty. This has to do with how you communicate with your peers, your classmates, your teachers, other people who are working in the same environment that you are. I think that as perfectionists, we tend to communicate in terms of success or failure. This can result in us falling into patterns of only talking about when we've succeeded really well at something or when something is just overwhelmingly difficult and that we work in these two poles of communication and we don't actually talk about what the real experience of learning or doing our work is because we want to hide behind these two really familiar things of doing super well at something or just not doing well at all. So try to make space to talk with your classmates about what's challenging in the work that we do and what's enjoyable about it. By doing this, we open up a space for more honest and open communication where we can actually benefit from each other's advice, each other's struggles, and leave room to be a little bit more human in our approach to the work that we do. Additionally, if we try to communicate in a more honest way with our teachers, then we open up room to ask more questions and to learn more. Perfectionism often is grounded in both a desire to do really well because we love our work, but also in fear of failure. Being open and honest can free us up from the fear that actually holds us back in succeeding to our best and happiest abilities in our own work. The kinder and more generous that we are with ourselves and with each other, the more opportunities we have to really flourish and grow in our own work and to do the best that we can. I hope that you found these tips helpful and useful in providing a self-care focus for how to approach our studies in order to relieve stress and anxiety and overwhelming feelings about the work that we're doing. The parts of our character that push us to be perfectionists can actually be channeled towards doing work that is fulfilling and satisfying rather than perfection. Please give me a thumbs up if you like this video and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications for new videos every week. Comment down below with your own tips for overcoming perfectionism and start a conversation today that practices honesty and generosity so that we can all encourage each other in our work. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week.